Hi YouTube, if you've been to my channel before, you might have seen this previous video that I did where I did the split face from the thing. If you haven't seen this, I'll put a link at the end so you can watch this one as well if you want to. In this particular video, I'm going to be making Norris. It's the bit where all the sort of spider arms kind of burst out of him. Okay, this is how I started, just with a wooden base. I drilled six holes into it and then I've put aluminium wire in the holes and super glued them in. Then the wires can all be twisted around each other. This is two millimeter aluminium wire, so it's really easy to bend. You can see here for each leg, there are three holes and then the wires are twisted up around themselves. This just makes the legs a lot stronger. Next, I covered the whole figure with aluminium foil and I really pressed it firmly so that it's nice and dense. At this stage, we're still getting the overall shape and it needs to be just a little bit thinner because there's going to be a layer of milliput added to this. If you haven't used milliput before, it's a two-part putty. You mix the two parts together and it sets rock hard in about four hours. Milliput very kindly sponsor this channel, so I'd like to thank them. And if you haven't tried it, go out and get yourself some because it is really good stuff to use. So I started by adding a thin layer of milliput to cover the neck. And then I started pressing wrinkles into this. And I do that by putting a thin sheet of plastic over the top of the milliput. And then using the sharp edge of a modelling tool, I press the wrinkles in. Then you can peel the plastic sheet off and you get these nice rounded edge wrinkles. I then use a small ball stylus to put all these little holes in all over the place. And then I just covered the head as well. But that's very basic kind of covering of the head. And that will be added to later. Next I use some more of this 2mm aluminium wire to make these six supports for the legs. At this point I had just used a very thin sheet of milliput again just to cover the main body. This starts to show off the shape of his tummy and his back. Um, and then I've just used some more milliput just to do the first section of each leg. And then I wait until that hardens before I do the other sections. Okay so here you can see I've done the claw parts of each of the legs. Um, and I'll refine those later. The other main thing I've done are the trousers. And you can see the way I've done this is I've started by doing the front sections of the trousers and then I'll do the backs afterwards. I've also put some feet on but they're a lot smaller than they're going to be. That's just to kind of anchor him onto the base. Um, the arms as well, I've covered them with a very thin layer of milliput again. Here you can see I've done the middle section of each leg now as well. And then I've also done this kind of... Um, bit of skin where it kind of bursts and then this is the the sort of flap of skin that folds off to the side so I've put quite a lot of textures and things into this because this will be all nice and painted up with lots of kind of blood and gore and stuff later okay it might have been sensible to wait until right at the very end to add these six inset like legs but I couldn't resist I wanted to see the overall shape of him so I just used this little pin vise to drill six holes and then the wires from the ends of the legs are just attached in with this Gorilla Super Glue. If you've got blobs of super glue right where it meets the edges of the legs, what you can do is sprinkle some bicarbonate of soda on it and it makes the super glue dry a lot quicker and it also gives you sort of uh, lumps where it coats it and it basically makes it stronger right at the joints where it meets the legs. Right, he has two extra small human arms that come out the front. So I've just made another couple of supports with aluminium wire. They're going to be positioned sort of roughly like this at the front of him. You can see I've added more to the back of his trousers, put a few sort of creases and things in, and then I've done a bit of a belt at the top of his trousers as well. Next I added some milliput to those two small arms, and then I started on his face, which is obviously a lot more fiddly. Um, I mainly use very tiny ball styluses to do this. I started with his tongue, then I did his gums and his teeth, and then his lips, and then his nose, and then his eyebrow ridge, and I've just left nice deep gaps underneath that to put the eyes in later. And then I've done his cheek and his chin and lots more wrinkles. Moving down, I've done his intestines. This was basically just a really long, thin sausage of milliput. And then I've just uh, twisted it to get all those nice folds. I was really pleased with the effect of the intestines. Um, with the shoes, I've made them a lot bigger. Um, this again helps like fix him to the base. And then I've just basically done a lot more wrinkles all over the place. So the technique for doing the eyes is you just roll two small balls of milliput, let them fully harden, and then I stuck them into position with super glue. 
Then you make the eyelids with very thin layers of milliput and you can shape them in at the corners with a ball stylus tool. I then added a lot more gore down here, loads more kind of intestines, uh, bits of like guts and things just hanging out. I don't think you can have too much of this really and you can use a bit of artistic license. You can copy things that you've definitely seen from the movie. Uh, from stills and things like that but you can also kind of make up little bits I think to add to it. <laughs> um, you can see here I've also refined the shape of the ends of the legs and um, that's by using a Dremel drill with a sanding attachment. With the small arms I've added hands to those and then what I've done is just make a couple of holes in a ball of aluminium foil uh, and then I just use this to position them basically while they're drying but you get the idea now of what these little hands are going to look like. Finally, I added some more to the back of his head, which was just a case of adding a lump of milliput on and then pressing the details into it. You can see you've just got these nice kinds of ridges and things. Just adds a bit of extra texture. Next, you can see I drilled a couple more holes and added the small arms. Again, these are just attached on with the super glue. I've added quite a bit more in the way of uh, gore, I think, even more. Um, and then what I've also done is I've drilled a couple of holes in the main arms, the bigger ones, and I've just attached a couple of wires in. Again, I used this um, drill vise to make the little holes. Um, added some wire, and that way I'll be able to add milliput over the top and it will make the hands a lot stronger. Okay, at this stage he's pretty much ready to be painted. I've added the larger hands. I may refine those a little bit more with the Dremel drill. I've put the little um, extra muscles on his arms. I've added just a bit more kind of definition here and there for his sort of pectoral muscles. Um, his back, I haven't really added much more to. I don't mind uh, with my own kind of sculpts that I do. I don't mind if the back is not as refined as the front. It just saves me a bit of time. If I was doing this as a commission for somebody else, obviously I would put just as much effort into the back as I do in the front. But as I only ever really view these from the front, it just uh, saves me a bit of time if I don't add quite as much detail at the back. For the first painting stage, I just mix red and black to give me a really nice dark red. And I've watered that down quite a lot because I wanted it to be a wash. Then you basically paint it like over the whole thing and because it's a bit more watery it creeps into all of those little cracks and things makes them look really nice and dark. Incidentally all the painting that I'm doing on this is using System 3 acrylics. Next I made a flesh colour by mixing yellow ochre, cadmium red and white. On this uh, video it shows up and it makes his skin look a lot yellower on the video but it's not, it's much more flesh like in real life. Um, so I painted the whole body and that was just using it like, like solid paint basically. Then I've used dry brush technique to go over all of the um, skin like on his head and all the spider arms and that sort of thing to bring out all the wrinkles. So you can see the deep parts of each wrinkle remain that really dark red that I put on first and this uh, flesh colour is just on the top surfaces because of the dry brushing technique. If you haven't done dry brushing before, you basically just get some paint on your brush and then you rub it all on a bit of kitchen paper until there's hardly any paint left at all. Um, till it's almost completely dry and then you're just rubbing that over all the top surfaces. That way the paint only hits all those top surfaces so it looks like highlights, like the light is catching it and all of the deep places remain with really dark paint. Next I painted his trousers with process cyan mixed with black and I did that with a lot more black to start with so it was really dark. Painted the whole of the trousers and then I mixed the paint again but with more of the process cyan and dry brushed that over the top so there's a lighter blue over the top. So overall the trousers still look dark blue but they do have some definition where it's uh, darker in the deeper places. Painted his shoes black as well. Okay, this is how he turned out and I'm really pleased with him. So I've added some white for his eyes, painted in his irises and his pupils, some white for his teeth, 
and then I've added the hair. The hair was just some, um, it was actually like a white sort of stuffing material from a cuddly toy, uh, but it was nice and kind of curly. So I've put that on first, glued it on with super glue, and then uh, painted it a really dark orange to start with, and then a brighter orange to give it a, a few highlights and a bit of definition. I've done a lot more dry brushing with lighter and lighter flesh colours. And then one thing I've also done is gone over with something called a uh, System 3 Glaze Medium. Um, and you just paint this over the top of any areas you want to look a little bit glossy. So you can see here on all the intestines they look a bit shiny. I've also done it on the teeth and the eyes. It just gives them a, a little sort of glint, makes them look a little bit more realistic. One little touch that you might not have noticed is that I also stuck some of the hair to his back and his shoulders. Um, it's very light, but it, again, just is a little touch that makes quite a difference, I think. So look out for that. There are obviously so many cool movie creatures, and I've got a massive list of ones that I'm working through. I've done quite a few already, but I've got so many more left to do. I would love at some point to do the spider head from the thing uh, and also the mutated dog. Uh, I may get round to doing those but I've got so many others that I want to do first. Okay, my main reason for doing this sculpt is obviously because both my, my mother and my wife just love these kinds of gory things with lots of intestines falling out. <laughs> Actually they don't, they, they probably hate them but... I really love The Thing, it's one of my favourite movies and um, there's just so much kind of uh, gore and interesting kind of special effects that are all kind of handmade. Um, so yeah, like I say, check out my other video of the split face if you get a chance, I'll put a link at the end of this. Um, thanks for watching this one, hit subscribe to see anything that I post up in the future and I'll catch you in the next video.